Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 61 of the Cloud Computing Training Show featured on YouTube and podcasts with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. This week we're excited to have Bernard Golden back on the show as our special guest. Bernard is the vice president of cloud strategy at Capital One Bank. He is a long time tech innovator and visionary and is the author and co-author of five books including the best-selling cloud computing book ever Amazon Web Services for Dummies. Hi Bernard it's great to have you back on another training show this week thanks for joining us. Well thank you so much for inviting me I'm looking forward to it. Yeah it's been great it's been great uh, we've already obviously filmed the Australia show and the, the C-suite show so this is going to be a cracker we're really looking forward to this. Um, hi Dave uh, great to see you again welcome back to the training show. Yeah, it's great to be back. Great to have Bernard back after a year. Yeah, absolutely. Almost a year to the day, actually, which is uh, quite bizarre. It's a bit of a fluke, but it worked out really well. So I'm glad our diaries all came together. And thank you for your time, both, uh, both of you. It's very good of you. Um, so look, in this week's show, we're going to be talking about that uh, in 2019, analyticsinsight.net have predicted that organizations will appoint a digital skills officer. Yes, that's correct. A digital skills officer to help manage their team's technical skills to create structure in their training efforts, working closely with the Office of the CTO and the CIO, who I can only assume can't wait to be working with them. So I guess an opening question then, guys, is uh, will the digital skills officer become a standard in organizations? Over to you, I guess, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I think it should. I mean, our, our something that's an analog to that. Um, we've always had a, you know, VP of training or VP of um, skill sets or, you know, something like that in different companies. But they never had a significant role within the organizations. It was almost, um, you know, the, the you know kid in the in the schoolyard that's picked on, you know, as far as on the executive team. I never really paid much attention to them when I was C CTO of several publicly traded companies. But the reality is their, their role is a lot more important than I thought. And so your ability to kind of build the skill set within the organization and make the planning and deal with the training companies and get the training in place and build the training in house and you know, get the you know get the thought leaders in house and things like that. You know, it's something that's really going to set the tone for the culture within the company. And you know, now and you know, at my advanced age, I kind of look at you know this is kind of critical to the company, probably more so you know than um, you know a lot of the other officers that they have. And, and the fact of the matter is that they need to think strategically, they need to think innovatively, they need to understand the up on technology, they need to figure out how to do uh, skills transfer need to figure out how to assess things, how to do skills matrix analysis and all these sorts of things that most organizations don't have. And so when I, you know, deal with the Global 2000, if I talk to the CIOs, you know, who's in charge of training and they'll say like, well, we send out, you know, course catalogs every, uh, you know, quarter and people can, you know, take the courses that they want and not take the courses that they don't need. Well, the reality is I think that has to be kind of a a requirement to get people into always improving their skills. And I think that's going to be, you know, part of their evaluation at the end of the year and how they're compensated. Uh, you know, my current job, I'm compensated, you know, with my ability to kind of understand what I do already, but also with my capabilities of kind of keeping up with what's going on. And uh, the reality is some of the training I do myself because I'm an autodidact, but some of the training is you know, uh, basically prescribed within the company. And it's always good to kind of keep the round and stuff, especially the business stuff. I have a tendency to neglect, you know, uh, understanding the business aspects of the, tech, of the technology and things like that. Well, going forward, if you're going to be a successful company, you're going to have to have people who are skilled to kind of innovate and take the companies to the next level. And I think is absolutely a critical position. I think we've had, like I said, analogs of this from lots of different companies that haven't gotten a lot of juice, haven't got a lot of budget. Uh, but I think this is absolutely an imperative to kind of get the global uh, 2000 companies to the next level. And if you're a small company, this is absolutely what you need is table stakes to get into the marketplace. So what do you think, Bernard? Yeah, you know, it, it's really critical. You know, if you sort of accept that um, cloud computing is a is a step change or is a, you know, a new platform, you know, you, you've really got to get your people skilled on it. And it's going to be a universal platform. So it's not going to be like, oh, there's one group that needs to know X, you know, so we'll train that group. No, this is this is like Windows was 
when it came into the industry. It was like everybody had to learn Windows. I mean, it was like a core skill across the entire IT organization. And, uh, you know, I believe that that will be the case uh, as it is here. At, at Capital One, where I work, you know, the company made a commitment to go all in on public cloud. And it, it recognized that part of its requirements were going to be that everyone that was working on applications or everyone that was working on core infrastructure would need to have cloud skills. And so it set up a tech college, it created a curriculum, it went out, obtained training from the best organizations, put that forward, and then you know made that a significant part of everyone's expected activities and their tracking. And tracking in the sense of, you know, both individual, have you done the training that you need to do, but also, you know, in higher level uh, roles, higher level responsibilities, saying, have you gotten enough of your people educated? Have they gotten certified? Have they, you know, gone through the gone through the curriculum? Because it's it's a it's a foundational capability in the organization. And I'll I'll just say one more thing about it, which is organizations that leave it up to the individual and there are organizations that don't even say here's the course catalog do that it's it's just sort of like oh we expect you to f somehow pick it up on your own or you know go choose a course you face a challenge then in that you have inconsistent levels of knowledge or inconsistent types of knowledge around these very critical technologies in your organization and so one group or one person will say oh, i think you solve this problem this way and another group will say oh well i i took a you know i read a blog post that said you should do it that way and that's very challenging because if you're if you're somebody like a cio you need to have consistency across your organization so that you have efficiency that you have operational consistency that you can you know make sure that you track your systems the right the same way and so forth so uh, an education a skills capability that's consistent across the organization that's been brought forward is absolutely is really really important yeah I, I couldn't agree more and i think ultimately you know this not only needs to become a uh, standard within the organization but this needs to be elevated to you know almost a board level position uh and i really think that even if this you know the uh, digital skills officer does not have a seat on the board but you know, does on the executive team. I think someone on the board should be, you know, his or her analog to, in essence, deal with some of the issues with some of the training stuff and understand, you know, how things are going. I mean, one of the things that uh, I just kind of think is lacking, you know, having attended a lot of board meetings in the past and having, you know, been the officer of public each rated companies, is that we're not necessarily asking the questions in terms of culture, skills, you know, kind of take things to the next level. And usually the HR people, you know, are put in charge of cloud skill, are put in charge of cloud skills or whatever, you know, hiring uh, for the next generation of technology. And the reality is they think that there should be a VP of HR, which is in charge of hiring, firing, dealing with uh, human resource issues, which are getting more complex going forward. And then a digital skills officer, which is in charge of the training needs to occur, the planning needs to occur, working in, you know, in conjunction with HR and understanding kind of the needs of the employees that are coming into the organization, but really kind of map out the fact that we're going to take everybody on a journey through their career, you know, over the next 10 to 20 years, and we're going to have the classes and the training that they need to be successful. And by the way, this doesn't mean that everybody has to have training and be pushed into classes in order for them to do their jobs. I think this is a matter of the fact that we're going to cause the ch culture to change get a culture of innovation around the skill sets that we're, that we're pumping into the organization and also the people we're hiring. And I think that it has to be symbiotic one to another. I mean, I never put a lot of um, uh, emphasis on uh, on HR and hiring and, you know, culture and things like that in the past. And, you know, now I see the impact of that. I, I kind of really see that we're able to take companies to the next level just by changing the culture around innovation, use of technology, whether it's cloud or ML or, you know, edge computing or IoT, it doesn't really matter. But the thing is, we're using this stuff as a force multiplier to kind of take the company to the next level and your ability to kind of define the skills that are going to allow them to actually build the things to take the companies to the next level is absolutely an imperative, as well as hiring out the street. But the thing is, if I'm hiring somebody with a set of skills, you know, this year, I'm going to be looking for a completely different set of skills next year and the year after that. And so my ability to kind of change the skill sets ongoing, get people who are able to 
basically move and become very agile in terms of how the market's changing and the different skills that are doing. And my ability, kind of a de- uh, chief uh, sk- a digital skills officer, to in essence guide that is absolutely going to be an imperative. And am I uh, a little too positive on that, Bernard? Well, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I, you're right that education, employee education, has traditionally been sort of, you know, oh, the, the HR group will take care of that and they'll figure it out. And, you know, this kind of knowledge, I mean, this was a cloud computing set of predictions. And, you know, certainly I believe that cloud computing is a, we're going through a fundamental transformation in the way that IT operates. It's not really fair to expect somebody in HR to really understand the details of that. And so if you sort of go, well, we need to get educated, I'll just call up the, you know, the person over in HR who's in training to, you know, figure it out. That's, um, that's forfeiting your responsibility. If you're a CIO, a CTO, um, you've got to figure out what is the right curriculum? What is the content of that? What do people, what, what skills do people need to know? And we have to be, take an active role in, in defining that. And so at Capital One, you know, this tech college, we assigned a very senior architect who led an initiative around what's the right curriculum? Where can we obtain it? What are the right skills that we need the, that curriculum to teach? You know, it wasn't just left as a let's go find somebody who says they have cloud training and, you know, and get a bid in or something like that. And so, but that was based on a, a perspective that said these are core skills that we have to build and that we have to have spread across our entire tech organization. We need to have a real strategy around it. Um, and, you know, it was it was highlighted to a very high level and tracked at a very high level because it was considered a core capability that we needed to have put into place. Yeah, I think that uh, I think Capital One is thinking the right way. Um, but, you know, going forward, we have lots of companies out there that aren't thinking the right way and they're and they're not reading this article. You know, even though they made a lot of predictions that I thought were kind of obvious and silly. But, you know, I, I think that this one is something that should come true. And this is something that we should, you know, kind of focus on. And they were looking at this as a prediction for 2019. And I think the reality is it's not on the radar screen of most of the global 2000 companies out there. I mean, we talked about in the last recording about the brand apocalypse or the, the inability for some of the older companies to catch up and, you know, kind of take things to the next level. And I think the reality is that, uh, you know, a lot of companies are going to kind of run into that. And I think that ultimately this is going to be a key differentiator for them in terms of building their skill sets and really kind of investing in how those skill sets are built. So, so Brad, you deal with a lot of this on a daily basis in terms of placing people within companies. So what's your take on this? Yeah, first, firstly, thank you guys. Uh, amazing content you're covering and, and some very valuable points. And, you know, look, my take is this, is, is my job really is to make sure retention levels are as high as they can be and projects are fulfilled and people are happy in their new role and happy with the hire and, and everyone's in a harmonious place to, for the good of the cause. Uh, essentially, you know, it's a bit of an idealization of recruitment, uh, probably, or getting people into a role. But how much does it cost the business for a bad hire? You know, typically, potentially hundreds of thousands uh, for a bad hire when you look at training, the whole process of, of onboarding, etc., the man hours involved in all of that. And you look at the cost of actually employing someone as a, a digital skills specialist within the organization that's going to relay the information from the CTO, the CIO back, potentially back to HR, or even look at specifically communicating that message of the particular project or the objective of the project to, say, a recruitment team like us. Uh, it would it would save the company absolutely thousands. It would make our job more tangible when we're communicating with individuals that firstly don't have their time wasted with a, a job that isn't what it, they thought it was going to be, and they want to be more specific. You know, we all know cloud computing individuals of a caliber are very hard to find, um, and, and they're 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 in high demand. So I think if an opportunity does show itself, people really want to be given. Um, an understanding of what that role really means to them and what they're going to enjoy about it. It's not necessarily about, you know, always about the money. It's not always about, um, you know, a, a, like a typical job would be, oh, it's more money, it's more this. You know, they're looking for something they can really get their teeth into, enjoy, excel at, and be a part of um, 
part of their career journey. And I think that's really important. And I think a skills individual that steps into the into the business at whatever size of the business, you're look you're looking to you know have a, a much higher retention rate and a, and a loyalty rate because they know what they're getting themselves in for. I think that is ultimately uh, how I would look at that. Uh, and I think it's it joins the company up as well. It's that missing gap between you know the 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 boards and the, the CIO and the CTO. Certainly from an in-house training point of view as well. Uh, that that continuity from an in-house training uh, is the glue of the the fiber of the business and the dynamics that in technology are shifting so rapidly. So uh, they, it's the missing part, really. Um, although we we started the show up with almost uh, talking about the ingest. I mean, when you do drill down, it's uh, it's a fundamental piece that could save businesses, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. So, uh, what what are your thoughts on that, then, Bernard? Well, I mean, I think. A, a, an organization has to have a holistic strategy, some of which is I'm going to recruit in from the outside because these are new skills I need, or maybe I need specialized skills, but also has to really think about how do I educate the people I've got on staff. And this is the reason. You bring somebody from the outside, they know a lot about the specific domain that you're hiring them for. Maybe they know AWS or they know Azure or something like that. They may not or probably won't have domain expertise in your industry or in your company. By contrast, the people who work for your company have a lot of knowledge about your your company, your industry, the challenges it faces and all that. And you really want a blend of domain knowledge of the of the technology and domain knowledge of the business. And so I think, you know, having a a an integrated strategy that says I'm going to hire some skills in, but I'm also going to be educating the people I have on staff and then I'm going to blend those folks to, you know, sort of grow my overall skill base and my knowledge base of how to apply those skills in our industry, that's absolutely critical. If you just think I'm, you know, I'm going to have just the same old people on staff, but I'm going to hire in, you know, geniuses that know this stuff, you're going to come up short because it's going to be hard to apply that new, those new technical skills to the domain that you that you operate in. So I, I think, you know, it's got to be, uh, you've got to have a plan for both is really the kind of thing. And maybe that's what a digital skills officer can help you sort out. Yeah, absolutely. 100% agree with you. That's uh, fantastic. Uh, and Dave, over to you for your, your top three tips on that one. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you need one throat to choke. So one of the things with uh, training is that it's distributed among HR and uh, the R&D organization and uh, executive uh, development and you know, all these other, um, you know, organizations within these global 2000 companies. And I think that your ability to go to one person who's in charge of the technical training is absolutely going to be imperative going forward. So I think this is, will lead to people being more productive. You need to ensure quality and planning. And so their role should be, number one, can I get the best content, the best training, uh, whether that's classroom or our, our, our video training, and then also having plans to understand the career paths of different individuals within the organization. I mean, everybody doesn't want to be a cloud person or an ML person. They want to be an ops person. They want to be uh, a DevOps person. They want to be a security person uh, and those sorts of things. Really kind of understanding the paths that they need to take through the training regimen. And then finally, this is not an underpaid, you know, uh, BS staff position. I think at the end of the day, that if we, you know, hire this person as someone who's just good enough and, you know, not paying them a lot and they're not taking a big piece of equity within the company, uh, we're not going to get a lot back. And so I think that we need to go for the fact that we're hiring somebody that's going to have a tremendous amount of important value within the company. They're going to be empowered to so they can be successful. We're not setting them up for failure. They're going to be funded, all those sorts of things. And they're able to make the right path for different folks in the organization. They should be able to explain it, you know, verbatim as to what they're doing at any given time. And we're looking for an A player. Great top tips there, Dave. Thanks again. Superb. You're welcome. And Bernard, thank you for being part of the uh, training show this week. It's been awesome having you back on. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I've really enjoyed our conversation. It's a really important topic. 
Yeah, it truly is. And look, you've been great all three shows as well. And, I, you know, it's, it's taken a bit more time this week. But guys, I really appreciate your time on this Sunday. I, I really do. And, uh, and if you're watching the training show, please go back and watch the uh, Australia show and the C-Suite show. We've covered some amazing topics. It's been very thorough and some, some great content out there. You get some great insights. So uh, we hope you enjoy watching those. Uh, we're all on Twitter as well. So uh, Bernard's on Twitter, which is at Bernard Golden. Uh, David's on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilly. We've got some blogs. Everything's in the description box below. You can you can click away and, and please remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we really love all the support we get on social media, so uh, that's really important to us. Um, and also, we're on iTunes and Stitcher. I think I've forgotten to mention that on, on the uh, two previous videos. So you don't have to just watch us; you can just listen to us. Some people may prefer that, uh, but anyway, I digress. But anyway, look, thanks for watching. Really hope you enjoyed watching, and until next week. <laughs>